And I wanted to talk to you today about an obstacle that is really common for people to run into when they're trying to make good, healthy food choices that support their health goals. And unfortunately, that obstacle is often financial. So I have to tell you, I definitely understand this because when I was originally a practicing chiropractor doing the adjusting and that soft tissue work and all that good stuff. I had a practice that I had built over five years and my health tanked, unfortunately, and my autoimmune condition flared up. My thyroid went crazy. My brain went kaput and I couldn't finish sentences. I just was losing my words. I had zero energy. I gained a lot of weight. Oh my heavens. I was like flatlined. It was so, so bad. And I tried everything I could, but ultimately what it came down to is I had to drastically decrease my stress and take uber good care of myself, even though the decisions were hard. Right. And so I had to close my practice that I had worked so many years mothering and growing, and it was just devastating. But consequently, I still had all these student loans, like mortgage sized student loans, and no income to support my family. We went down to a one income family, and I had a huge amount of guilt about that. And oh my gosh, I tried everything to save us money. I tried everything and I did a good old stint of trying to do couponing to save us money on our grocery bills. But after a few months of trying my hardest, I realized that coupons are always for crap. They're always for crappy foods that are like shelf stable and not real whole foods at all. And I realized how hard it was at that time to actually eat healthfully in a way that could get me out of the pits of like suffering that I was in with my health and not totally break my family's budget. So I completely understand this dilemma of wanting to have the healthy food choices and not having the finances line up to make it so. And so I just wanted to share today some of my tips that I have found along the way to save money here and there, and every little bit adds up. Some of these you might already know, some of them may be new to you. Maybe you don't even really have money problems, but who doesn't like to save money where you can, right? Or help a family member or someone in your community that could use these tips. So, you know, keep an ear out, not just for yourself, but for others. And hopefully this can help create a little more ease in the grocery bill in some which ways that will help you to reach your goals. So here we go. We are going to talk about prepackaged food, where and when and how you can find some discounts on healthy options for that convenient food that's already pulled together for you. I want to talk to you about some meat money-saving ideas, some produce money-saving ideas, and then some general like tips and tricks ideas for, for food planning in general that can save you some moolah. Okay, so First up, I want to talk to you about the hardest one to save money with and to find the goods, and that is prepackaged food. So for the most part, you really want to shop the perimeter of your grocery store. That would be like the produce section, the meat section, and well, maybe not the bakery. <laughs> A lot of times, maybe not the bakery, but you do want to kind of stay on the outside so that you're getting non prepackaged items. Okay, so there are some exceptions now where we have very minimal ingredients that are whole foods and they're actually in the middle section, the prepackaged, pre prepared section of your grocery store. So I want to talk to you about these first because these are also convenience foods and we're all really busy and some of us like love to cook and stay in the, in the kitchen and uh, brings us joy and it's how we share our love and those kinds of things. And some of us are barely holding it together from one day to the next. 
and it's just a rough chapter. So sometimes convenience foods are needed. What I have found is you need to read the ingredients and be very careful with what you're grabbing. But when you find something you like, sometimes you can find coupons for it at Whole Foods. And why is this my first tip? Honestly, like it just came out of my mouth and I'm thinking, did you just say Whole Foods on your first tip? I did. Whole Foods in general is not the place you want to shop (laughs) if you are going to try to save money because it is the only place that does have coupons for healthier options. So keep that in mind. But overall, unless you got one really convenient to you, it's not worth making the trip because you spend a lot more on other items. It's not ever going to be your only grocery store that you're going to go to if you're trying to save money. I'll put it that way. Okay. So Whole Foods is the only place that I can really find that has coupons for actual Whole Foods or non-nasty, junky, ingredienteded foods. So if you're going to spend time on couponing, don't even bother with what comes in your newspaper or in your mailbox. It's all going to be junk. Don't waste your time. If you're going to coupon, the only place to look is Whole Foods. Okay, where you would be better served is actually looking at places like Grocery Outlet or Winco, places that are lower cost, maybe like overstock type stores, often have really good quality foods that you can actually find and pay a pretty darn penny for at the regular grocery store, but they're maybe they were overproduced or they've got something weird on their packaging. Like they changed their marketing, their logo for it or something like that. And now it's over at grocery outlet. Again, you have to have the time to go to those places because if time is of the essence, you're probably not going to find all of your grocery needs that are healthy at a place like that, but it is worth it looking every like month maybe and going and stocking up on the stuff that they actually have there that can support your health goals and then leaving the rest behind and picking and choosing where you get those things from, if that makes sense. So places like Grocery Outlet, Winco, other overstock type stores can have quite a bit of little gold mines in there that you can find. Okay. I mentioned Whole Foods. Here's one of my very favorite tricks. If you have a Whole Foods and then you have a grocery store right by Whole Foods, you might be able to find a bunch more of their healthy stuff marked down. So like in the meat department, you're more likely to find their grass-fed foods, their grass-fed meats under like the manager's special section where they've marked things down if you're right by a Whole Foods. So You may not save money at Whole Foods, but you can still utilize Whole Foods to go find yourself a deal at a nearby store on healthy foods. Okay, so I'm moving away from the Whole Foods right now. Next, I'm going to talk about the big box stores. So when you're looking at the typical big box stores, the most common ones are Sam's Club and Costco. Of the two, I would definitely say that Costco has more health supporting foods than Sam's Club does. And these are of course in bulk because they're big box stores. So there are certain things that you can find over at a big box store, specifically Costco, that is health supporting and less expensive than you're ever gonna find in a grocery store. For instance, I get Siete brand cassava chips that is very, very clean. And um, I love the cassava chips, but I would never pay for it at my local grocery store all the time because you get this little tiny rinky dink bag for like five bucks, six bucks over at Costco, three times the size. Okay. Uh, Same for maple syrup. Oh my heavens. Maple syrup is expensive at the grocery store. Not expensive. $11 over at Costco for pretty decent maple syrup. They've got honey there. They've got almond flour. They've got, they've got a good amount of things that can help support you. If you go like, you know, once a month or something, if we're talking about the prepackaged 
um, items. So you can go hunting at your local Costco and they make it easier because all their organic items have a big green price tag. So you can spot it from a mile away and um, see those items easily. It'll help you kind of go a little faster, but you can definitely get some good finds over there and then just supplement with some fresh produce from your local grocery store. Speaking of Costco, we're going to kind of move into the meat department of this conversation. So as far as Costco is concerned, I feel like their best deal in meat is actually their grass-fed ground beef. Meat that is a healthier sourced meat is very much so worth the effort that you put into finding it. Finding healthfully raised meat is so important because it matters if your meat is fed hormones or antibiotics, or if your meat is fed cheap, cruddy food that will fatten up the animal fast so they can get them to slaughter and stop having to feed them versus food that the animal is actually physiologically supposed to be eating. It matters the lifestyle of that animal. If they had a life where they got to graze, a life where they weren't just shoved together or in a tiny little cage. The energy, which I know, you know, some may think is woo-woo, but I don't. The energy of the meat, but also the nutrient value of the meat is so incredibly impacted by the type of meats that you buy. And many of the meats that are standard are very inflammatory and are going to promote diseases. So I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that can help you to source more affordable meats, but I needed to kind of tell you why it's important in the first place. And sometimes having less meat is a better option if you can't afford the really good meat. Not in all cases, but this is the conversation we're going to have here. Okay. So I mentioned Costco. They've got good grass-fed ground beef. I think that's the extent, honestly, of what is really good and affordable over at Costco as far as meat is concerned. Their grass-fed ground beef is about just a touch over what you would pay in a grocery store for ground beef. So it's not that big of a price difference to make that swap and you'll be getting really good omega oils and really good fats to support your healing and anti-inflammatory actions. Um, So I think that's a really good place for that to be purchased. I will say overall, the best place for beef is to get it from a farmer. That's an unfortunate tip in some ways, because if you're going to get it from a farmer and you're going to buy it in bulk, which is the ideal way to do it, Unfortunately, you usually have to have a good chunk of money in order to purchase a quarter cow, a half cow, whatever you're going to purchase. You can get in some farmers, and it's not always easy to find, but you can get all the different slabs of beef for like $5.99 a pound, which is that a little higher than the ground beef that you could get at the store? Of course it is, but it also can include some of the other slabs, which would be like steaks, you know, well, tri-tip and roasts and I mean, all kinds of yummy yummies. If you've ever tried to buy grass-fed steaks, it's like, I mean, here's my kidney. Can I have a serving of meat, please? Like, it's kind of crazy freaking expensive. And so this is a way, if you ever can pull together a tax return, or if you ever come across any money for whatever reason, it's a good place to actually invest your money is, is getting in touch with a farmer that has good practices and investing, reserving um, a share of a cow. So that is the ultimate best option that you have when you're looking at trying to get not just ground beef, because we get a little tired of just ground beef. Sometimes we want a steak, gosh darn it. And if you want a good quality steak, that is the by far most affordable way because it is so stinking expensive to buy from the store a steak that is grass fed. 
okay? So if you don't have, we're going to say in the low 1,000s of dollars to get a quarter or a half beef, or you don't have access to a farmer that can do that, there are farmers that sell like 40 pound boxes of maybe a pork and beef combo or a, a beef and chicken combo. And, you know, you can have a couple hundred dollars and get still a like 40 pound box of it. There are those share types as well. Do some research for what is in your area. Just know ideal world to get all the best cuts is to actually go in on a share of beef. But if you can't, don't give up and look for the farmers that help people who don't have a chunk of money stashed away for their own beef share. They sell them 40 pound boxes and um, that's like a couple hundred dollars and that, that can get you through a good amount of meals. So those are some options for beef. I would say chicken is tough because I'm tackling the hardest one first. Okay, meat is the toughest. So chicken is tough because if you get a properly raised chicken, they're usually pretty tiny compared to what we're used to when we get like our rotisserie, right? And they're really expensive. Could you get a rotisserie for six or seven dollars at Costco for a big, fat, juicy, yummy chicken? You sure can. Or you can pay 25 or 30 dollars for a chicken that's like half of its size. And I'm going to be honest with you, even now we have a hard time with the chicken bit because I have to feed five people. And if I'm having to cook, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to spend that much money on a chicken. <laughs> and so I know it's really important, but what we choose to do is we don't buy those chickens. I give myself permission to just have a little grace and just say, well, this is an ideal, but we're just not going to do it as often because it's not an option for the other right now. And some people can totally afford those chickens, especially if they don't have a large family to feed or whatever, or money isn't at all a consideration. That's fantastic. Please do that. Super healthy. That's great. But if money is tight, maybe chicken is not your best, like, one to start shooting for right off the bat and also if you have to have chicken that isn't healthy maybe just have it less often okay moving on to fish fish befriend a fisherman that's what i'm gonna say <laughs> befriend a fisherman get a fishing license yourself maybe even it might be worth it to make a once a year trip to a place where you can throw a line out into the water and get a healthy edible because not all the waterways have edible fish, right? Depending on how toxic the waterways are. But if there's a place that you can go and you know the fishing's good and you can gather in enough to last you a good while, it might be worth a little quote unquote vacation to get your fish stocked up and then ship it back or, you know, put it in an ice chest and put it on the plane with you or whatever you need to do, but that might be a consideration. Also, there are certain seasons where you can get wild caught salmon in your grocery store. The trick is it is whole and frozen. So we're talking a big fat daddy salmon and we're talking, they could be like $2.99 a pound, which is unheard of for wild caught. But you can't defrost it and then cut it into smaller pieces and refreeze it again because you can't defrost and refreeze. So unfortunately, you're stuck with this whole big, huge salmon that's going to go in your, your freezer. But when you do cook it, you can cook the whole thing and then freeze portions of it. Just keep that in mind. You know, we do that around here in January, February. We have a store called Safe Mart, which used to be, oh heavens, Albertsons, I think. And so I'm sure there might be something in your area that is like that. And that particular store has those every year in January, February. So I start looking at the ads about that time. And I only look at the front page and I only look for the fish because that's what I'm looking for right at that moment. So you can get fish that way if fishing or traveling is not an option. Just don't get farm raised. It's just not worth it. It kind of defeats the purpose of the health 
benefits of fish. So any other which way that I mentioned here, um, fish is a fantastic thing. Of course, tuna, you could have up to a couple times a week and that comes in the can. So that is a good option as well. Sardines, same thing. You can also do some wild caught salmon in a can. Those are all healthy options for the most part. Watch the labels, but for the most part, you can get your fish that way if you need to. And then the final thing I have to say about meat is you can always utilize the seasons. If you're gonna get ham, you probably want to do it after St. Patrick's Day. If you want to take advantage of turkey sales, you can hit up after Thanksgiving and do a bunch of freezing. You can cook and freeze, cook and make soups with, you know, the cooked turkey and kind of put them all and stock your freezer up with any turkey based soups. You can do all of those things right after the holidays, wherever those meats are sold and get yourself all set up for less expensive meat eating in the future. Okay. So my favorite topic is how to get a big savings on produce. The reason why this is my favorite topic is because this is tricky because they're, they're on sale sometimes at the store, but this was where I kind of found my finesse with saving money. And I loved my first tip so much. It was the biggest, best gift to us when things were especially tight. And that is going to the farmer's market in the last hour of business. So your farmer's market closes at two, show up at one or one thirty. 130 is a little pushing it because they're all starting to pack away. But if you show up like between that time and you start making your rounds, as people are starting to pack up their fruits and vegetables, they do not want to pack all that up and haul it back to the farm unsold for it to probably go bad. What they will do is deeply mark it down. They will take bunches of it and put it in bags and say $2 a bag for like ridiculous amounts of them. If you get a huge bag of plums, let's say that you're never gonna eat all these plums, you can certainly throw the pit, like cut them, throw the pit out, freeze them and use them for 5 million different things, okay? So you can jam them, you can put them in smoothies, you can make shrubs, shrub drinks, if you don't make those, oh my gosh, so yummy. So you can do tons of stuff with them and you get them for pretty dirt cheap. So the last hour of the farmer's market is produce gold. Okay. The other thing I will say is when you are looking at a fridge full of vegetables that you're worried about going bad, which is the biggest like money wasting thing with the veggies, make yourself one of the following. Make yourself a kitchen sink salad. What's a kitchen sink salad? It's every vegetable that you can find thrown all together into a salad. And so it's everything but the kitchen sink. That's why it's called kitchen sink salad. Okay, so you can do a kitchen sink salad. You can also do Scooby sandwiches, which are like a kitchen sink salad, but you're putting it all in a sandwich. So you end up with like a big, huge, like stack of deliciousness and every flavor under the sun that you can munch into very very satisfying and you feel like you just like I don't know you just had this huge treat and it was mostly vegetables so I highly recommend Scooby sandwiches which are kitchen sink salads stuck between a couple pieces of bread or lettuce or whatever you choose to do similarly I take deli slices of turkey that I get at Costco, by the way. And I basically put the kitchen sink salad between the turkey, wrap it up, turkey wraps, good healthy lunch. One of my favorite lunches. Um, you can also do it with soups. I don't do it so much with soups personally, but you can. Kitchen sink soups, I guess. So you can do that for overripe fruits. You can freeze them for smoothies or shrubs. You can make them into popsicles. You can do baked goods with them. Like for instance, um, some sort of uh, apple crumble, or you could take overly ripe bananas and make them into banana bread. Or you could take greens that are starting to wilt that of course you're not going to eat like by itself, because who wants to do that? when they're wilty and not that exciting to eat, you can blend them with a tiny bit of water 
and then put them in ice cube trays and those can be your greens for your smoothies. So um, that's a good option because you don't know that they're wilted when they're blended into an ice cube and then you still get the nutrients in your smoothie and you didn't waste anything. Okay, so no fruit or veggie goes to waste. You can also put them in a Ziploc baggie in the freezer, the little veggies that are starting to, to die out or your veggie scraps and you can make a vegetable stock soup basically after you've gotten enough to do so so that you're not wasting that either. I would also say in the produce section that growing what is expensive is a good tip if you only have a little bit of space or you don't have like a huge green thumb why would you grow stuff that you can find easy and cheap like I don't know zucchini or something like that you can if you like growing zucchini or if you have lots of reasons why you'd grow zucchini but strawberries that are organic are a heck of a lot more expensive so when I had tiny spaces or tiny bandwidth for any kind of gardening I was just like what do we eat that is so stinking expensive organic grapes organic strawberries organic berries in general you know different things that you can find that normally you wouldn't want to really splurge for but it's important to use them organic that would be a good thing to grow so what do you use organic you would want to look at the, the dirty dozen and the clean 15. The clean 15 are often veggies and fruits that have like an outer peel or an outer shell that it doesn't matter if they happen. It doesn't matter as much if they happen to get sprayed with pesticides versus something that is porous or doesn't have a shell like the berries or the grapes or things like that, that um, can absorb a lot of pesticides and you're totally going to be eating them if you're eating those foods. So um, figure out what's clean 15 and dirty dozen and the dirty dozen, you're going to want to splurge for the organic and the clean 15, you can um, save a little bit of money if you can't buy organic by using those kind of conventional. And then of course, eating what is in season. So if you can grab those fruits that are in season and freeze them or preserve them in some which way so that they're you're not having to pay high dollar for them later, that is a very good strategy as well. For instance, in the wintertime, avocados are like $2.50, $3 each versus a dollar, sometimes less in the summertime. And so you can freeze avocados and still get the benefit of avocados by putting the frozen ones in your smoothie or defrosting it and putting it in things like chocolate avocado pudding or something like that so that you get the benefit of the avocado, but it doesn't have to be like the actual avocado season for you to get a good price for it. You don't want to go all those months without the avocado is what I'm saying. Avocado is life, but you also don't want to have to pay $3 for one. So you can do things like that, keep in season and freeze. And then finally, my, my last couple of tips I would say is to have backup meals plan for days that you forgot to pull something out of the freezer. Like you forgot to pull a meat out of the freezer. So you have these backup plan meals that you've pre-prepared or stashed away. Maybe you like cooked a double recipe when you cooked one night and froze half of it. So that on the night that you lost your brain for the morning and you forgot to pull out a meal, you don't have to go to a restaurant and pay 50 to $100 for feeding your family because you've got that little stash that you just need to like pop in the crock pot or pop in the Instapot for a quick meal because it could go frozen to like cooked over uh, an hour or less. You know, you can do things like that where you set yourself up for success on your oopsie days. So have some backup meals prep so you don't have to spend high dollar for really crappy fast food or really expensive restaurant food. Also meal prepping, it's its own skill. I should probably do a podcast on that or some sort of a lesson um, workshop or something like that on meal prepping, but finding a method that works for you and allowing for days for leftovers so that you can not waste any of your food that you're making 
that is a very good money saving tip. Plus you only buy what you need. So that's helpful. And then my final tip is cooking more than you are actually going to eat. So if you're cooking dinner and you've got six people to feed, maybe you make eight or 10 servings because that equals lunch the next day. And if anybody has to work outside the house, well, it's a heck of a lot less expensive to take leftovers from the night before. It is not only less expensive, but it is also much healthier. Okay, I rattled off a lot of tips. I hope you found one or two or all of them helpful. And I hope they open up new ideas for how you can make healthier decisions, even if the wallet is a little thin here and there these days. And I look forward to talking to you about more tips that make healthy eating and healthy living affordable and attainable for you. I'll look forward to talking to you next time. Take good care. Bye.